What does always have something to look forward to mean? I want people to take the reins of their own life like a horse and point it in the direction that they want it to go. You know what I mean? If you want to go east, you have to go like this and go east. So that was another thing my father gave me. He said, Jossie, always have something to look forward to. And it's very important because it, it helps you to believe that you are creating your own life. You know, I'm going to... We talked a little bit about the artist's way, and they have an artist state in that. You take yourself on an artist state. And I remember being involved in the artist way, and I loved it. Uh, but I was terrible at getting the artist state in because we're, you know, this is going to call my attention, and that's going to call my attention, and I have to be at this appointment. And, and, and we busy ourselves out of the artist state. So to always have something to look forward to is part of being responsibility, taking responsibility for your own joy. It's very important that we take responsibility for our own vibration. If you're a creator, creativity and joy go hand in hand. There is a school of thinking that is, you know, the more pain or the tortured and stuff, you know, all these artists are, you know, great artists are tortured people. I, I just don't, don't buy it. I find it an indulgence. I believe joy and creativity go hand in hand. So we're responsible for, for creating that. In, in, as in teaching, in my classes, my students will tell you, you know, they get morose and they come to class and they're like, you know, it's so hard and then auditions and, you know, there are no jobs and now they make you, you know, film yourself and, you know, they just walls of complaints. And it's, some of them have been around for 20 or 30 years and they're tired of the industry and they have a whole nother level of complaints. And I ask them things like, you know, when is the last time you took a day in nature? You know, when is the last time you did something fun? When do you plan things, you know? So I make them make joy lists. I literally make them like this one guy. So do you have to go and next class, bring me 10 things that bring you joy. You like doing them, you know? And he came back, he had one, he had one thing on the list, golf. And I went, okay, golf, great. Next week, two more, you know. And he kind of pulled himself up. And when you do those things, when you look forward to, you know, it turned out he liked uh, softball, you know. So he went into a softball league and he played in a couple of games and he came out and he was like, you know, that's his jam, man. It made him happy, you know. Uh, you know, I, I'm not, I'm far from a Pollyanna, but you're responsible for your own happiness. So when you, first you have to know what you like, make a joy list because you can't put things in the future if you don't, if you're not looking forward to them, you know, if it's not something you love that's going to bring you joy. So first make a joy list if need be, and then you put those things on the calendar three times a week. Why not? You know, people go, one artist state, forget one artist state. It's your life. Put things on your calendar to look forward to that you want to do. You want to go to Europe? You don't have any money? Say to yourself, I'm going to Europe in a year and two months. In the October of the la la year, I'm going to, and where am I going to go? And get specific, just like artists, just like actors, you have to get specific. I'm going to France. Where are you going in France? Well, I'm research that. I'm going to these two places in France. Great. Where are you going to stay? And when you start getting specific, just like you create a part, that's just like creating a part. Where are you? You know, where, where are you going to stay? All those kinds of questions are the same kinds of questions that artists and actors ask. You answer all those questions. You put the date on the calendar. You start a little savings fund. And you know what? Sorry to seem airy-fairy, but the universe is going to contribute to that because you are now operating at a higher vibration. And that's where inspiration comes in. Sure. And on the flip side, not to be too morose, but it can work that way in the negative as well. Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. If you, when you constantly worry, you will attract things that will contribute. It's really benevolent, though. It's really like, oh, did you want to worry? 
okay, let me help you out with that. You know, it, it's it, there's no good, bad, or indifferent about it. It just is, you know. Uh, and if you complain, then you'll find more things to complain about, you know. We're so complainy, and meanwhile, we're so blessed. We really, I have to say to my husband all the time, we're, we're complaining. We're complaining about ridiculousness here. We're complaining about who's going to cook the salmon tonight, you know what I mean? It's like, let's, we have salmon, let's cook it, let's celebrate. I think you said in the book that uh, some of your students... They think there's a career that they want, but really it's someone's career that's already out there, and they're and they're in a sense emulating that. But they need one that's true for them. Yes, yeah. There was, you know, I have students that, um, and I think it's natural. You know, they're very taken with, you know, she's a singer, she wants to be Madonna. You know, he's an actor, he wants to be James Franco, or. They, they see these people, it's a little bit of a love affair because there's a lot of admiration that goes on in the arts and certainly in acting. And so, you know, they, they fantasize what it would be like to be this person. And there's nothing wrong with fantasy, but it's not going to get you what you want. Your dream, your dream is not fantasy when you can see yourself in the picture you know madonna for instance that's a very clear concept of her career she had to have seen it she saw the costume she saw the hair she saw the makeup she saw the voice she saw a presentation marilyn monroe the same thing so that it's just a tiny shift over to what is that for you? What is that for you? If you want to be that kind of actor, which is to create a whole kind of an image thing. There are different kinds of actors. You know, there's Cary Grant actors and Marilyn Monroe. This is a personality that you kind of create for yourself that sells. That's a little old-fashioned. And then there are character actors who have a much broader, uh, what is that called, arc. Of, of who they can play, and, and some of them, can, you know, we never recognize them every time we see them, because that's their goal, is they want to enter so far into character that we don't recognize them. But when they're really good, they're still tethered. They're still tethered. They never release. Once you release, it becomes acty. You know, you're playing at something. But when you loan your heartbeat, your breath, your nervous system to an entirely different character who, you know, then you tweak the nervous system and it's a little bit different and you tweak the energy. This one has lots of energy. This one is tired or exhausted or ill, but you're still tethered in, on that energy line. It's as if this character's energy were your line. You're feeding it. Does that make sense? I think so, yeah. So do you think most people want to be the persona or, or there's yeah. some that definitely want to be the Yeah, they want to be the persona. They want to be admired because we're living in a really narcissistic society right now. And narcissists don't admire each other. They don't, you know, they're not necessarily kind. They're, all of their attention, their thinking is on themselves. So we're in a very thinking society, not a being society, not energetic being society but a thinking society. And that's why I talk about meditation so much because, you know, I was just talking to a car, a guy who drove me in a car, and I was talking about you just have that little separation because he was telling me, you know, I get cranky and I don't know, my family, and I go, you know, can you just look at it? Just look at it. If you can, what meditation gives you, even if you do it five minutes a day, it gives you the understanding that you can step outside your thinking which is all, sorry, ego. It's not, we, we can't do without ego. We have to have ego. It's not a terrible thing. It's just out of balance. You know, we're just like all about ego and thinking. But if you can step out a little bit, just like that much, you can look and see, oh, I'm thinking this or I'm behaving that way or, you know, I'd like to change this. You know, I had a, I, I get cranky sometimes over, I'm not going to get into why, but, you know, we're all imperfect. 
And I was getting very cranky with my husband. We were working together, and sometimes I'm cranky when we're working together, we're writing together. He'd go, no, it doesn't go that way. And, and he is such a beautiful human being. And suddenly I took a little step out of myself and looked at myself and went, she, really, Jocelyn, do you, do you have to carry on like this? You, this is kind of mean and abusive, and why are you doing it? And so I looked at my husband just because I could make that little separation and said, you know, I'm really being a bitch, aren't I? And he was so loving and dear and looked at me and said, can, can, you, can you help it? Can you just step out of it? And I go, well, I've stepped out. This is about as far as I can go right now. <laughs> you know? But then we laughed. So what was the question? Well, is it almost like an outer body experience? So there's the, there's the persona actor, yeah. which when they walk in, um, you know, all eyes are on them. And then there's, it sounds like there's the chameleon who can really become almost another person. Yeah. And, and I think the question was, uh, do most actors want to, um, become the idea? Like if I just absolutely adore Kate Blanchett yeah. and, and want to become yes. everything that she does. And I realized, wait a minute, I'm wanting to emulate her. I'm not yes. trying to be the best me, the apples and oranges type of thing? It's, it, it's all from the same question. It's why I wrote the book. There's no connection to self. There's no connection to self. So as a teacher, you know, I could say to them, you're fantasizing. What do you want for you? What is your career? Do you want, because they also, th along with that fantasizing of being Kate Blanchett or any one of them, you want their career. So you want a movie, you want to be a movie star. You know, people don't think about theater as much. People don't think about television. They don't think about creating their own movies, make your own movies. You know, what is it that you want to do? Because nobody's asked them that. So you have to be asked and you have to continue to ask until what happens? Boom, 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 something happens. Only you can answer that question. And only you can answer that question with your own nervous system you know, with your own responses. So really what we need is because we need to lead people back to themselves in their own point of view and their own autonomy. Because even with the chameleon actors, often they're acting out of unhappiness. They're trying to escape themselves. And so they can do this magic trick of really entering, but they're not very happy as people. I'm for like, you know, let's, let's, let's have a little fun in life because we're not here very long. And I want to set an example. I want people to set an example that this can be fun because right now it's really dark. And one last thing, if I may, before we move on, and that is if I, and I'm, I'm using, let's say, the Kate Blanchett analogy, but what if that's not my type? What if I want to be that type, but my type when I walk into a casting office is someone completely different? And so I'm trying to become an orange when I'm really an apple. How do I reconcile that with myself as an actor? Right. First, you have to check on the heartbeat. Is it? Do you really want to be Kate Blanchett? Do you really want to play those parts, or are you fantas? Or are you wishing you looked differently? Um, and if you really want to play those parts, you can find a way. You know, there was a, a model. I grew up. You know, I was a really bad model, but that's another story. Um, but I worked with some, around some very good models, and you know, Twiggy was a big deal. So the eyelashes and stuff. We looked sort of alike. But there was a, a woman named Penelope Tree, who was a model, and she didn't really have the face of a model, and, but she wanted it. She had a heartbeat for it. It was a real thing for her. So she created. A face with kabuki. She made a white face with very extreme makeup. And she wore very uh, geodesic, uh, kind of, not geodesic, geometric clothes. And she had poses that no one had ever seen. Like, you know, she was very, uh, just odd, strange uh, poses. She created her own thing. She was a huge hit. Why? Because it came from her imagination, like Madonna, you know, it came out of her imagination. She saw it. You have to be able to see yourself in it. Um, if it's not from your own heart, you're never going to get there. Here's another example. I'm not going to mention her name, but 
you know, I trained with a beautiful actress, I love this woman, who wanted to be Kate Blanchett. She wanted to be a movie star, and she was never going to be a movie star. She was, you know, from kind of coal mining. She was salt of the earth, babe, that sort of was recognizable to all of us. And my teacher, uh, who was Milton Katselis, he was he was very hard on people. I don't believe in being that hard either, but he was very hard on her. And <laughs> he kept telling her, you know, you're not going to play these parts. You're not going to stop doing scenes from these parts because you're not going to play these parts. You're salt of the earth. And finally he said, he, he hit home with her. It maybe it was the sixth critique, maybe the tenth critique. And he looked at her and he said, is Anna Magnani not good enough for you? And she didn't know who Anna Magnani was. And so she went and she looked up Anna Magnani and she realized what he was talking about. And she realized the wealth of parts available to her as a character actress. And she, st I'm getting goosebumps. She started working and she hasn't stopped since she's in everything. She's in everything. So it is finding, but it had to ring in her heart. She had to look at Anna Magnani and go, oh, I feel it. I see myself in it. You have to see yourself in it.